So this is the agenda for the presentation. First, I'll describe the problem. And then I'll provide a set of desiderata that any solution to the problem should satisfy. And then I'll describe um, specifications for a solution to the problem. And finally, the implementation. So again, here, the index origin is zero, although the code, the ideas, the algorithms, the examples, all work in one origin with the obvious modifications. So what is the problem? Um, so we're do using um, tolerant comparison, some non-zero value of quad CT, and we're finding applying unique to uh, some vector in this case. And it tells us that there's only one unique element. You believe that? X actually looks like this. And then the expression that tells you that there's something wrong, even more so that there's only one unique element, is that uh, there are some elements of X which are not in its unique, which is <laughs> undesirable. <laughs> and the problem is even more obvious if you use 1e6 here instead of 10. So why has 1e6 plus 1 elements, and yet the unique primitive tells us that there's only one unique element and, uh, and there's a whole lot of elements of Y which are not in its unique. Uh, okay, for this problem, again, the best solution is not to have the problem at all. <laughs> uh, if in your application, you can decide that we don't need tolerant comparison, we can use exact comparison namely by setting quad ct to zero, possibly localized in a function, then you can do that uh, and then avoid this problem altogether. So you as an application person in APL can make this choice, but we as APL implementers cannot. So, and this, is, this bug occurs in um, uh, all dialogue versions as far back as we can look. And it occurs in all APLs and APL dialects, which has the unique primitive, including J. J also has this bug. Or had this bug, as far as I know. Um, and where does the problem come from? What's the underlying explanation? Well, it seems to be based on use of this bad meme, <coughs> which uh, dates from the earliest days of APL. It occurs in uh, papers, textbooks, conference presentations, folklore, uh, stories around the campfire, and so forth. Um, there's nothing wrong with this expression if you're using exact comparison. Or if quad CT is zero, even if you're using floats. Um, it, it depends on equal being transitive which is true if you're using exact comparison, but it's not true if quad CT is not zero and you have floating point numbers. Because you can have A equal to B and B equal to C and very easily for uh, A not equal to C, tolerantly. So this is one test. I'm applying unique to the, uh, to the vector X I had before and using exact comparison to 
this bad meme apply to x, and they're exactly the same. So that's an indication that uh, the implementation uses this meme. And the problem here is that if you, do, you, know, you apply the parts of the, of the uh, defund, you know, index of the tally of x, and then x i of x, where are they equal? Only in the first instance. And then the next is just like, each one is equal to the previous one. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if x has a million elements or just 10. If it follows this pattern, then it only choose the first one as a unique element. And if I apply the, uh, the meme to, the, to a random vector of nearly equal numbers, I get exactly the same result as the primitive. So that's another indication that the primitive is using the bad meme. Oh, when I said before that all the APLs and APL dialects, which has unique, g gives you the wrong answer, uh, there is one exception. And the, but the exception is because we told them about it and they fixed it. Now, fixing this uh, bug in unique, uh, of course, is a non-comparable change. I say again, fixing this bug is a non-compatible change. So we propose to do it only in version 17.0 forward. Okay. The bug also affects key. If you use as left argument to key the key operator folding point numbers with non-zero quad CT, then they will also give bad answers. Again, we will fix it in version 17.0 uh, going forward. Um, at the same time, since we're making changes um, to unique, here's a consistent extension to unique we propose to make is that uh, un we propose to make unique find the uh, unique major cells. So if you give it a matrix argument, it will find the unique rows. It's currently a rank error. Um, since tolerant unique uh, proves so uh, problematic, it behooves us to specify uh, a set of properties, desiderata, uh, which any unique function should satisfy. The uh, desiderata need not be nim minimal, but it should reject any unique function uh, that doesn't have this, these properties. And uh, when a failure happens, um, it should make it fairly obvious what the problem is. So, and it's an operator. UD is an operator, and alpha alpha is purported to be a unique function. So if I give it the current unique function and apply it to integer arguments, it's fine. But if I apply it to these floating point numbers that are equally the same, then it complains. So let me go through the uh, set of decelerata. The rank of the unique should be the same as the rank of the argument, but at least one. Uh, actually, when you have these exceptions like that in the desiderata, it's an indication that probably there's a, there's a hitch in the design. So this is saying that the unique of a scalar is a one-element vector, which is probably 
you know, you can argue that that's not a good thing. And this is one indication of that, that one max. And uh, later on, I'll show you another indication that the unique of a scalar is kind of dodgy. The second, but we have to have it here because it's, it has to be there for compatibility with the existing unique. Um, the second uh, property is that uh, the uh, major cells of the argument should be in the unique. And we have to say it this way, instead of the shorter and more obvious that the major cells of the argument uh, belong to the unique. We can't say this because we cannot extend epsilon in the same way because the, um, uh, the current epsilon <coughs> dating from APL 360 treats the right argument as if it's raveled. So that determines that the, it's looking for scalars. So it dates from APL 360, and it's what I call original sin. And then the next one is that, uh, in turn, the major cells of the uh, unique should be exactly one of the major cells of the original argument. That's kind of, it's not directly obvious, but you could have, you know, when tolerant comparison <coughs> is involved, you could take the average of two major cells in the argument and have that one unique value cover both. But this is saying that we're not allowing that. The major cells of the unique must be exactly one of the major cells of the argument. And then, uh, Again, we're having to use index of to, uh, to fit the calculation of the epsilon. And then the indices of the uh, unique using exact comparisons um, must be strictly ascending. And the next one is that uh, the alpha alpha function, the unique function, should be idempotent. This one is probably redundant, but I never miss a chance to use the word idempotent. <laughs> it's a $10 word for saying that if you apply the unique function again, you should get exactly the same thing. <laughs> and finally, this, this looks like a bad, bad meme, but it's useful in this case because it's a more efficient way of saying that if you compare the unique to itself, you should get the identity matrix. But this is a fast way of saying that. So uh, this set of uh, desiderata illustrates something we know from the theory of NP completeness, which is that it's easier to check than to compute. So we, we, have, we believe that we have specified all the properties that a unique function should have, but we haven't actually, we don't actually yet have one up to this slide, uh, a way of computing a unique. So again, um, as in the theory of NP completeness, checking is easier than computing. Or Andy's job is easier than we developers' jobs. <laughs> On good days. <laughs> so, another desiderata, uh, desideratum, sorry, is that we want the solution to be uh, linear time. So, if we double the argument size, the uh, double the argument size, the execution time should no more than double. Yeah? 
And uh, so this, when you get a problem, that explains why there's a redundant assignment, so-called redundant assignment to the variable t, because it suspends at the problem of, at, you know, where the failure happens, and then you can inspect the value to see that, uh, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's more than 2.5. Okay, um, right, all right. Okay, specifications for the uh, unique can be, found, can be found in two different places, in the ISO standard and in the J dictionary, where it's called NUB. Uh, the ISO definition only works for uh, vectors and scalars. You see here it does a ravel. But the J definition uh, works on any uh, rank array. In J, the word item means major cell. Um, I claim that the J definition is easier to understand, so we're going to use it instead of the ISO definition. They're the same on vectors and scalars. So it's, uh, it's quite straightforward to implement it. Uh, unique one works on arrays of, uh, any, ra of any rank. And it's instructive to compare it to the version that works only on vectors. So, uh, so applying the desiderata, it works on vectors and also matrices, but it fails a desideratum on time because it's not uh, linear, it's quadratic. All right. Okay. Um, but we have a solution using the ideas from yesterday, using the hashing and clustering uh, idea from yesterday. Yeah, we, we said that uh, this problem with tolerant unique is what motivated the work on uh, index alpha multiple floats. Actually, we didn't need to use uh, the code for uh, index alpha on multiple floats, but we, can, we, uh, we did better because we, we can use the idea from the other problem. So. Uh, alpha alpha is the hashing or the clustering function. So we apply it to the uh, data, and then we apply a key to it to get the clusters C, which are sets of indices into the original argument, name X here. And then we apply uh, an anonymous, anonymous function to the sets of indices returning uh, the indices of the unique uh, major cells for each cluster. And then we uh, collect them together, sort them, and then index back into the original argument to uh, get the unique major cells. So uh, this function cluster that we used bef that we saw before namely in yesterday's uh, presentation, makes essential use of the interval index function. Uh, uh, and uh, we apply it using JFOLD's key insight that you can apply clustering to the columns independently, getting an integer, matri uh, integer array result and then we uh, k, which can 
which we then use as keys, or equivalently using uh, k index of k as the keys. Okay. So that's uh, that's how we do it in the real case. In the complex case, as we saw yesterday, we can't uh, use uh, the cluster directly on the complex numbers, but instead we have to apply it to uh, the magnitudes using twice the uh, tolerance. Uh, so let's look at the look a little bit at this uh, anonymous function. There's kind of a cute expression here. Let me focus on that. Uh, here. Notice the symmetry. There's a either the left shoe or right shoe, and then it's a either a right shoe or left shoe. I forget which name is which. Yeah. Uh, and then it's natural to wonder whether you can do better than this. And the answer is yes. So in answer to a certain person, there's a use for infinity in APL. So if you had, this is saying infinite rank, negative one rank and infinite rank, but because I don't have infinite, I use 999. I think rank 999 suffices for most applications. Uh, so in answer to, to all you cold golfers here, you know, you can make this shorter by removing the parens, but for artistic reasons, I insist on the ba uh, parens to balance. You know. And then, uh, Oh, uh, curious minds would wonder still, can you do even better? And this occurs a lot. And it suggests that maybe there should be a primitive for doing indexing on major cells. Food for thought. Okay, now, okay. Uh, let's compare the uh, Shalusun from yesterday to the one today. Here's the unique, and you can see the corresponding patterns. And uh, the one from yesterday, I think, poses uh, a couple of challenges for the de denotational style of programming. One is that uh, inside the function, it references multiple names. Z and X and Y. So the question is, how do you do that in the de de denotational style? Um, another one is that I'm not sure whether uh, using at instead of the index assignment would improve the read readability or the understandability. And finally, uh, it's repeating, repeatedly modifying an argument which can be quite large, so I'm not sure how that would tur turn out in the de denotational style. Um, so back to here. So, all right. So we have linear solutions in both the re in the real case and the complex case, and they satisfy the um, this is a rata. Problem solved. Any questions? Uh, not a question, but an admission of guilt. This bug was reported by a customer, but uh, the line of code in question was something I had written on a <laughs> consulting project. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, s I've seen this before at other major clients. What I did was I implemented a cache. So you're trying to um, 
you have a function that gets called over and over and over again. You want to avoid calling it, so you, it's uh, the memo, memoization, essentially. And I forgot that I wanted to have quad CT set to zero in the lookup in the memoization. I've seen this a few other places. Remember, you almost certainly want quad C. It's more correct, in fact, to use quad CT0 in that case when you're trying to find out whether you've called a function with exactly the same set of arguments before. And it was just some nested array argument where one of the elements was floating point. And after the customer had used it for a while, we got this call saying, Dyadic out is broken, uh, or something like that. It was all my fault. But anyway, you had a good time, obviously. <laughs> so you owe me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sure that uh, using the Edica Iota or Unic without uh, putting quote CT at zero, if you are playing with uh, floating, that I would propose to you to give us some switch uh, that we can start to say, we want to get an error if I try to use uh, <laughs> them without quad CT at zero. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the thing is, the thing with tall in comparison is that you, you may be depending on pro nice properties of you know, equality, less than or greater than and so forth without realizing that it's gone when you have non Non exact comparison. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing work, though. We'll never ever use it because now we'll all remember to set quad <laughs> CT to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Whilst remembering to set quad CT to zero, you probably ought to set DCT to zero as well. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you.